So what was chapter 17 on? Guess what? The first one, <clears throat> she said about the, about the duality. Duality, yep. Yeah. But, what, what, for, what? For ex yep. mm -hmm. Please. Yeah. For no, example, no. when uh, when uh, we uh, we want to talk about duality, uh, we inverse uh, or uh, switch the uh, roles of, for example, morphism, uh, turning uh, domain to the uh, to the codomain, and uh, and That's the right. opposite, vice versa, or uh, That's inverse. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um. Exactly, exactly. And and as she says, um, we can work, and, th and this is really important how she puts it as, as normal. She picks her words carefully. We can regard, it's a matter of change of perspective. We can regard all arrows in a category as pointing the other way. They're the same arrows. They're just regarded Again, yeah. from this different perspective. It's different angle as view as going the other way. Same arrows. And this gives us the dual category. And as she says, one advantage is that we can immediately get a dual version of every construction and every theorem. Um, and the way in which, given a category C, the way in which we denote a dual of the category is by putting an op around it. It's the same category C, but it... And, and it's the same objects and the same morphisms. It's just the morphisms are viewed as going the opposite way. Um, so the, the objects of the category, C op, are the same as objects of C. Same darn objects. But the morphism is going from um, object A to object B. The HOM sets going from A to B and C op are are just exactly the same morphisms, the same morphisms as those in the home set from B to A in category C. They're just considered to go there to change of perspective. There's the same relationship being encoded, right? Um, a, you know, um, Mary is, you know, Sue's mother. Sue is Mary's daughter. It's the same relationship being, you know, Sue is the child of Mary. Mary is the parent of Sue. Um, it's the same relationship. We're just viewing it kind of from a, another angle, right? Um, yeah, in fact, uh, there is a different perspective, and you you didn't change the information. You don't change the information. You, exactly. you don't. There's no change in the information. C op um, has the same morphism in the same pattern of compositions. So if you have Mary being Sue's parent and Sue's being Jill's parent, Mary is. Sue's, uh, Mary is Jill's grandparent, or you could view Sue as being Mary's child, and and you could view Jill as being Sue's child, and and you could view Jill as being Mary's grandchild, right? Same patterns of composition, just looked in reverse, right? Um. So so given a morphism A to B and C going from A to B and C, that morphism is viewed in C up, it's going from B to A. Um, and, and it's important to recognize that it's the same morphism, same relationship, same information. But, you know, if you view it the other way, it has different properties, right? Like if, if, if it's a function from A to B, um, like a, a mapping from one, two, three to A, B, um, if, if A, yeah, mapping from one, two, three to uh, X, Y, um, maybe B is X, Y, um, one, two, three is A. If we view it in the other way, it's so, so if it's a function between those, um, viewed in the other way, it won't in general be a function because um, it won't necessarily specify, you know, it won't necessarily meet the criteria of the function, right? Maybe it maps. One, two, so if A is one, two, three, and B is 
x, y, maybe it maps from 1, 2, and 3 all to x. Um, and viewed the other way, it wouldn't be a function. I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, it's some sort of relation between x and y and 1, 2, 3, but it, it's not a function. It doesn't say for each you know, x and y what they map to. Right? Um, uh, it's, it's a co-function. Let's go to the co-function. And it has nice properties. It turns out it's related to partitions and so on. Um, uh, now, importantly, for the, this notion of dual, you get sort of double mileage. You get, as, as Eugenia Cheng puts it, buy one, get one free. Like, if you have a distinguished universal property, you have a product in C. Um, well, um, we could consider products in C, but then we can consider products in C op, and those look different from the perspective of C. They're about the same morphisms, and they'll articulate the duals of those. The, so, for example, for product, the dual will be called a coproduct. Mm -hmm. Or if we find if we find a monic um, morphism in in C op, um, we'll we'll have an epic uh, over in C. Um, and find a colimit. Excuse me. Find a limit in C op. We'll have a colimit in in C. Um, and uh, it. You know, often these these other structures themselves are universe have universal properties. Um, so Eugenia Cheng, or, or, you know, suggests going through a, a certain process. You know, first consider the category C. Now consider C op, which has the same objects and the same morphism, but they're just they're viewed as going the other way. And now imagine, and it's the same composition structure. It's just it's going the other way. Again, grandchild instead of grandparent, right? Um, now imagine an object in C op exhibiting some structure um, in C op exhibiting this universal property. So maybe it's a terminal object in C op. Mm -hmm. So it's in C op. So let's see, it's a terminal object in C op. And then we say, what does that correspond to in? C, like what? So, so it's some structure, or at least in, in, for the case of the terminal object, and some specific object in C op. And we say, what object does that correspond to in C? Mm -hmm. um, as we'll see with 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 products, it's not just the the object, but sort of the projections down from it. Um, and those you can go and it's the same morphism, so you can see them over in C. Um uh and Eugenia Cheng recommends not actually drawing C up to avoid confusion, but I don't know. I um sometimes I draw C up. Um so maybe maybe you can tell me, okay. So if we have initial and terminal objects and the divisor of 30 category. Remember what they look like, right? If we now consider C op, so suppose this is the initial. Um, okay, so this is our category C, right? Now consider C op. What would C op look like for this category? If this is C, the category C, what would C op look like? Uh, are you going to be screen sharing right now? But I can't see anything. Oh, you can't? Oh, gosh. It no. says it's, it's it's screen sharing. It says it's screen sharing. Can you see it now? No. No. Oh, no. Okay. It's, it says I'm screen sharing. So, okay. Okay, we're in trouble. Um. Um. Okay, this is not, not, oh, okay, um, whoa, okay, 
Uh, let me try it now. I've just tried resetting. Yes. Yeah. Is that better? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so if we have this category C. Yeah. Oh yeah, so uh, by the way, I was I was reading from this this thing here. I'm sorry, I must not have seen this. Um, uh, do all of the category and, and key points. Um, again, I'll provide all the uh, these these slides here. Um, I went through this process. Um, but if we have a category like this, if this is C, what would C op look like? Remember, this is a terminal Tens object in this category. This is an initial object. What would the what would C op look like? One would be the terminal object, and the third would be the uh, initial. Initial object, exactly. Change together. Yeah, because all these morphisms will be flipped, right? And that would mean all these arrows here point into one, and all these arrows come from what object here? From, uh, come from 30. From 30. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All of uh, arrow direction of arrows uh, will be uh, um, will be opposite. Exactly. Exactly. And and so what was the terminal object in in uh, C will be the uh, initial object in C op, right? Um, and what was the initial object in C will be the terminal object in C op, right? Um, OK, so. How about this one? So this is an isomorphism. Um, and uh, I say, so so it, suppose we have an object here and there exists an isomorphism F um, from C to D. What? As, as you what mentioned before, like? both of them can be uh, terminal and initial. Okay. Um, so let me ask this in, uh, in in the dual category in C op if this is in category C what would this look like in C op D is initial and uh, D is terminal and okay, well, G Okay yeah I'm not I'm uh, not saying this is I'm just saying this is embedded in another category I'm not saying C and D or I'm not saying this is the entire category. I'm just saying this is, suppose this is in a structure oh, yeah, in a yeah. ca category C. And now suppose I were to look at C op, what would I, what would it look like? It would be basically the same. It's just F and G would point the other way, but it doesn't really make any difference. Would they see, be, still be an isomorphism in C op? Yeah. Yeah, yes, isomorphism. It would. It'll be an isomorphism in C op. They'd flip the other way, but one would still be the inverse of the other in the sense that you compose them together, either direction, you get these identities. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, if you flip the arrow Acosia with the identity, does it change anything? No. No, it doesn't. Still goes from C to C. Right. Okay. Um, and she, uh, Eugenia Cheng, shows uh, very nicely on page 231 how when we, if we were to consider a monomorphism in C op, what, so if we were to go into C op, imagine that, run out aloud if you'd like, and we're to find a monomorphism there. Something that's monic, right? It's kind of the analogy to something that's injective, right? But but it's everything that's injective is monic. It, this generalizes well beyond sets. If we were to go find that, and we were to go then find what that looks like in C, what would we see? What's the corresponding structure in C? I would remind I would remind you to look at the top of page two thirty one. What's the corresponding structure? A monomorphism in C op in the dual category corresponds to what in C? To uh, epimorphism. Epimorphism. Mm. 
it's like, okay, this arrow gets flipped, right? Um, so so if it's in C op, <laughs> um, uh, that it's a mono, it's one of these. When we look at it from C, this arrow would, would be going this way, right? Um, and and these arrows would be going that way, and it would look like an epimorphism. And and the formulas would be such that a monomorphism in C op is an epimorphism in C. And an epimorphism in, in C op would be a what in C? An epimorphism in C op would be a a what in C? Monomorphism. Monomorphism. So these are like buy one get one free, like like the these are duels of each other. They're just close cousins of each other. Now, that's if if you think about it, this is like highly non-obvious if you think about it in terms of elements, right? So I read again on the top of page two thirty one: a monomorphism F is epic in C if and only if it is monic in C op. Like, if you think in terms of the the elements, and like if, if if you think about it in set, and you're thinking about the elements in C op, like that's that's very non obvious that that's true. But she walks through the reasoning here, um, and uh, and on page two thirty one, and it all holds. So it's kind of a a fascinating result that you get for free um by going going through this but that's not the only thing and, and this is again it's just incredibly cool you have these um we're, we're gonna one of our big workhorses it's, it's gonna be like ubiquitous in, in the work we do um it is ubiquitous it's what they call the product okay now if, if you've started reading chapter 18 um you'll You'll, you'll be moving towards products. And a product is a universe, exhibits a universal property. And the universal property, and so I'm going to write the product in a category C is, as A, so a product of objects A and B, so it's a product of two objects, is some object in that category, which, so if it exists, it's some object in that category, um, with mappings down from that object to B and mappings down to A, you can kind of think of them as like a projection. Like given this product, I'm going to get the A out or I'm going to get the B out. I'm going to project it down to that. Um, so it, it's something like this. This is like the product and like, I'm going to get out the A, right? Or I'm going to get out this this uh, the B here. Um, it's sort of a projection that way or a projection this way. I'm going to get the one. I'm going to get the the second element to you, the two or the three. Um, so this is a excuse me. This is a product, okay? Um, but what what makes it a product is that it's the best of these. It's the most the 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 most. Um, canonical it's the one that everything else goes through everything else that has this property of being an object and having these projections having these kind of ways of getting an a out or getting a b out all those other objects go through this product they're factorized by it they are um uh they they like th they have this unique mapping um, to this other object uh, that means there's a one-to-one -one, um, mapping between, um, uh, for, for each of them, this is one one-to-one -one mapping between uh, this, this sort of uh, uh, pi one after h uh, is, is uniquely associated with this f. So there's a kind of unique factorization here. This is the kind of closest mediating object. It's kind of the, the natural one. You have to 
like any other way to do it, you could store this information about A and B, but really um, you're, you're, you might as well just go through the, the product. The product's the kind of most natural one. Now we'll get back to this next time. Um, uh, but basically specifying F and G uniquely specifies H here, okay? Um, and the neat thing about this is that this is dual. So this is gonna be a way of kind of bundling together different types of information, um, like the product of one, two, three, and A, B as sets would be something that looks like, like, uh, like this, but it's, it has a dual. So in other words, if you go into the category C, sorry, it's category C op, and you find products there, they correspond to some structure in C. And what is that structure? Well, it's a co-product. And it's the same, look, it's, it's just the errors are reversed, right? And if you have this in C op, if you look at it from C, what you would see instead of a this object going down to A, you'd see A going up to the to the corresponding object, which is called the coproduct. So when it, we have a product in C up, you have a coproduct in in C. And so this morphism goes up into the coproduct. This morphism, instead of coming down, goes up because the product was in C op. So it has the arrows go this way and C. This unique morphism goes this way. Um, F goes instead of down, because in C op it went down from C to A. Here it goes from A to C. And it turns out that in, this is a super useful coproduct, is, I would say, as useful as product. Like it, it appears everywhere. We see it all the time with sets. You have this or that. You have this set or that. Um, you have this set of elephants or the set of mastodons. Um, these are really important when we're sticking together stock and flow diagrams. We have this stock and flow diagram or that stock and flow diagram. Um, alongside each other, um, perhaps, or we have one or the other. A product would be alongside each other. We have both. This would be we have one or the other. Uh, and and in, um, in, in many programming languages, these are, are noted. Uh, so you have either, for example, I think in Scholar, you have either this or that. This is called the coproduct. And it's just as rich as a product. You, you get it for free. Uh, it's the dual. Uh, and it has the universal property. It's just in reverse. It's the closest meaning downstream object instead of the closest meaning upstream object um, to both A and B. This is kind of the natural way to store the information about A and B, this, uh, about both A and B. This is the natural way to store, um, to to get uh, something that's either from A or from B. So we're gonna be learning more about products and, and co-products, but they have this universal property associated with them. And once you define the product, you can go find products in the dual category and automatically get these, these co-products, um, which is, is quite, um, quite cool. Um, now, this may not seem that interesting, but it, it turns out, as we'll see next time, um, when we have particular categories, uh, if they have products, they're often really interesting things. Um, they're, they're really interesting constructs. And, and if you think about these familiar categories, um, they're going to have products in them. They're going to have these kind of, for example, this uh, closest mediating upstream object that is upstream of both A and B. So let me ask this. 
what what object here uh, is is going to be so so again uh, here we go um, uh, so a cross b is upstream of both uh, a and b and it could be one of a or b here okay um, so we're going to be looking for an object that's upstream um, uh, of A and B here. Um, and it could be one of either A or B. Um, uh, but it's got to be uh, upstream of both. So it's got to be, um, when I say upstream, you go down the stream, down the arrow. So what object is upstream of both of these guys can you tell me and it could be one of them which one is upstream from from that object you can get to either of the others by following arrows and remember there's an always an arrow from itself to itself so what what object here would be upstream of both these guys and the closest one upstream You want to say? You saying in the chat? Which one is upstream of of both these guys? Oops. Ah. ah. Of both these ones. Can you say? Where's my chat? Hey. Oh my goodness. I'm having trouble finding the chat here. Okay. Here we go. Which one of these is upstream? Uh, you know, we're, we're looking for an object. It's got to be one in the category that's upstream of both of uh, this one and this one, where upstream means you could follow an arrow from it to get to, to the, the other object. If A is upstream of B, it means you could follow an object, uh, an arrow from A to get to B. So what, can you tell me which one is upstream of both? The closest one upstream of both. Oh, I just thought I'd say hi. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, okay, Nicholas, this is a class I'm teaching. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is my class. So she, she told me this, I could say hi. So, okay. okay. I'd uh, say... Well, I thought you were wrapping up. Oh, okay. Time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll give me wrapping up within oh, five so. minutes. Okay, but I, okay. Nicholas could answer this question for sure. <laughs> Nicholas could teach this class. Uh, uh, Nicholas, I might be awesome teaching this class to see you. What's that? I said I might be teaching this class. Awesome. Just in a different semester. I got to talk with you. Okay, stick around, Nicholas. But which object here is upstream of both of these in the sense you could follow an arrow from it down to um, both of these objects? I don't know. I don't know the context. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm asking the students in the class. Okay, yeah. sorry. Have a good day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, stick around. Stick around, yeah, Nicholas. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But which of those? Come on, it's it's a simple question. What object is upstream of both of these? In the sense, you could follow an arrow to get to to either one. You could follow an arrow to get to F. Follow an arrow to get to T. Well, look, it's got to be one of these. Which one is upstream? Upstream, not downstream, but upstream. It's the source, and it could be yeah, F. yeah. So which is the source? Uh, which is the one? If you had to pick this object, so picking one of these, you can get to to all the others, or you could get to itself into the other one. Which one? F. Can you? Yeah, from F, right? From F, you can get to T. Can you get to to F from T? Here, no, right? You can't get to F from T. There's no arrow to it, right? There's no arrow from T to F, so you can't get to it, right? So the product here, by, by what we said earlier, um, the closest meaning upstream object, closest upstream object is F. 
because the product in the Boolean pre-order category is and. That's and of true and false is guess what? What is the and of true and false? False. False. Yes. Okay, I'm not going to go through it with, with each of these, but I want you to read the chapter, and we're going to find that this notion of product is incredibly natural. It's like the way we're thinking about all these things, but we give them different names without realizing they're the same thing. With numbers, we multiply them. With Booleans, we take their and. With sets, we and them, and we take their intersection. These are all... The same basic idea, the same basic concept, basic construct of products. It's just manifested in different particular ways in these different categories. In Boolean pre-order categories, we're, we're going to see things like least common denominator and, and least common multiple or whatever, greatest common denominator, etc. Um, the max or the min, etc. And I'm not telling you which of those it is, but it'll correspond to one of these. And you'll see the product. You've been dealing with products all your life. It's just you've given them different names. You had no way of sort of saying, oh, that's the same thing as that. They're just, you know, different different names for the same basic idea. They're just um, different um, manifestations, different faces of the same idea. And you'll see these are are all the same basic. They're all products. It explains all of these. And coproducts will explain the others. So anyone, if, if product here is, is and, guess what coproduct will be? Or? Or. It's core product. Mm. Mm. If, if product of is is intersection uh, uh I, I won't do that one but if 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 we have uh one b min hmm, coproduct um is if if we have product is min coproduct is going to be what max max yeah so so we're going to see these these common common ones uh, coming up um, again and again with different names, different faces, okay? So we'll um, we'll see this in the chapter on products and co-products. And these will be duals. And we'll see that, you know, the dual is our friend. It's, it's like we get two of each friend. Um, uh, like these are, suddenly we realize, oh, these are all our friends after all. They're, they're just all different faces of the same friend. And we have two of them. Um, for every, every of those, we have, we have another one. Which it's, it's dual. It's like it's doppelganger. Uh, like if only we could get the Nicholas doppelganger, like a second Nicholas, you know. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to talk with Nicholas. Um, but I hope this is, is fun, uh, as fun for you as it is for me. And uh, why don't you read chapter 18? up to i'm not going to ask you to read all 30 pages of it but let's why don't you read it up to um bu -bu -bum, um ooh, that's lots of good good wonderful things here so it starts on uh page maybe i'll i'll stop the recording